Welcome to your Technology Questions Answered, and I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka ZAXIS, and yes, you may call me that. We are February 27th, 2011, and we are episode 22, Troubleshooting Your Wireless Network, and let's get through a few points before we start the troubleshooting. First, you're going to have to lock down your wireless network. The instructions are in your manual, but this is basically what you're going to do. You're going to log into your router. You're going to change the router's password if you still have the default password there. You're going to use a wireless password. That way you protect your signal. Make sure it's not WEP, but WPA. Make sure, if it's possible, use the AES encryption algorithm. Make your password as huge as possible, as complicated and not from the dictionary as possible. That way no unauthorized connections can be done. For anybody using Windows Vista and Windows 7, if your router is compatible, like my DIR655 from D-Link, you can use the Windows Connect Now, which means you don't even have to know what the password is. You type it in, you put it on a USB key, connected from your wireless router, connected into each device that you want to connect to, and it will be done for the rest of all time. Got a new device you want to connect to it? Just put the ju jump drive into the computer and connect it again. You won't have to write that password down anymore. It's a good idea but you don't have to. Now that we've got that done, placement of the router is of utmost importance. Don't put it on the floor. That's first of all. You'll probably step on it, break it, then you'll have to buy a new one. Pets can buy you all the wires, break the antennas, and because it's not at line of sight, it's on the floor, it won't work as well as you think. Putting it on a shelf or on a piece of furniture, you can connect it on the wall, it's not suggested is the best place to put it at about the height of a toddler is probably where I suggest that you should put it but make sure wherever you put it it is as close as possible to line of sight of every device you want to use now that's not always possible because depending on where you are you're gonna be around gadgets with the same frequency routers your internet ether wireless ethernet cards and many other devices use a 2.4 gigahertz standard but Steve, which devices use this 2.4 GHz standard, you might ask? Well, one device that you might have not known is your microwave. I guarantee you it's not on Twitter. Then you also get your portable phones, your baby monitors with the video and audio and a bunch of toys that people buy all over the place. They all use a 2.4 GHz standard. And if you live in a large building with lots of other people using wireless they all use 2.4 gigahertz standards so you're gonna get something called signal interference now there are two things you can do about that besides painting the walls with the signal reflective paint you can change all those devices out to devices that do not use 2.4 gigahertz but either 900 megahertz 5.6 gigahertz or the DEC6 protocol or you can switch your router to an 802.11 an, which even though it does have a 2.4 gigahertz tuner inside, does use the 5 gigahertz standard, which is also, like the 2.4 gigahertz, free to use without license, which means you can actually own it and not have to get a license from anybody. Now folks, that's also why the 2.4 gigahertz standard is so popular in interfering with your internet connection possibilities. Now. When you buy an 802.11 and router, please buy Ethernet wireless adapters for your computers and laptop from the same manufacturer. I guarantee you, you'll have a stronger, faster signal with less distortion and interference in that frequency. Also, if you need to go over a larger range, consider buying a high gain antenna or two. That way you can actually send and receive your signal from a further range. The high gain antenna actually points the signal towards the range, whereas omnidirectional is everywhere. Remember, high gain pointed, omnidirection everywhere. You'll get 10,000 square feet from a wireless NDIR655 router, but if it's omnidirectional, that's over a whole lot of space. But if you have a high gain antenna with a narrow enough beam, you can get several kilometers off of it. Now, of course, the resulting internet adapter needs to have the same range to come back home so if you go over a large amount of space buy a high gain antenna for your computer or laptop that way you can actually send the signal back no point making a phone call in one direction it just won't work 
Now, besides that, we've actually covered the fact that you might need to change your router, change your internet adapters for those from the same manufacturer, if at all possible, dealing with the antennas. Do keep your router away from any device that has any high amount of electrical usage. That way you won't get any electromagnetic interference. Keep it as far away from the walls if you can. And if for any reason whatsoever you're still lacking in the coverage of your internet in your house, I still have two suggestions for you. You can use a wireless repeater which means you don't have to feed any wires anywhere in your house, but you will cut the bandwidth in half because it has to do something called flip-flopping, which means while the computer is sending towards that router your internet connection information, it's sending your information back to the original router and receiving the information being replied by the server, sending it to the router you're connected to, into your computer. So if you only had about 10 gig bandwidth which it doesn't, of course, there, but if you had a 10 gig bandwidth just for the so called easy math parts, and you just start doing flip flopping by using a wireless repeater, you'll be at 5 gig instead of 10. Now, you won't feel anything on a wireless end all that much. Even gaming, you don't notice the difference. But if you do want to keep the bandwidth up and on the as high as possible, up, there is something called a wireless A, uh, wired AP, excuse me. AP for access point. You will have to run a wire the length, but I have some good news for you. There is relatively no maximum distance with an Ethernet's RJ45 cable. You can run a thousand feet of it and not have any loss of connection. So, feed that wire as far as you can to the other part of the house. Put in a wired AP with the same internet connection information. Please bear in mind, both routers have to be from the same company and the same model. And at this point, you'll actually be able to have a greater range of internet possibilities in your house. Now, the only things you have to worry about at this point is making sure your password is strong and making sure you have as much fun as possible. Now, of course, speaking about fun, for all those who don't want to buy a high gain antenna, I do have a suggestion for you, if you feel adventurous to this. Freeantennas.com, links in the show notes. I got a clip from the lab with Leo on my website. Again, still in the show notes sources. You will be able to build something out of paper. The guy actually put aluminum paper on the back, reflected side in. That will allow you to direct your signal with various amounts of, uh, how do we say, um, some people got it to work, some of them didn't. Some people will tell you that if you point it directly at the device in question, it won't work. Slide it over to the side, it will work better. Well, people, it's free. All you need is heavy cardboard, maybe some uh, aluminum paper with the shiny side in, and you get to play around with it anyway. Anyway, it beats pa paying for a high-gain antenna, which will run you several hundred dollars. So, until next week which we'll be talking about troubleshooting your wired network. This has been your Technology Questions Answered. I am your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. Z-Axis, and a goodbye. Happy interneting.